Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the Marantz PM6005 amplifier. So I wouldn't term this as a mid-range amplifier or entry level, it's higher specification than that. And overall performance you're looking at 45 watts per channel into 8 ohms and the amp will deliver 60 watts into 4 ohms. Dual speaker outputs, so you can connect two sets of speakers and selectable from the front. And then it also incorporates the DTI converter. So this is a CS4398, and this is a 24-bit A to D, 193 uh, kilohertz. And then we have five RCA inputs, and um, that includes also a moving magnet input as well. So if you have a turntable, you can connect directly with no equalizer or, or preamplifier uh, external device required frequency response from 10 up to 70 kilohertz so good spec on there and then signal to noise ratio 102 db for the line inputs and 83 db for the phonos uh, standard dimensions so height for the amp 105 millimeters width 440 and then depth at 370 and weight is coming in at 7.6 kilograms and the uh, user has full remote control functionality from a handset so uh, let's talk to you about what the issue was with this amp so when he came into the workshop what you could determine during this test phase was if I selected a particular input there was quite a lot of loud crackling sound that you could hear and you also had crosstalk so when I'm talking about crosstalk if I selected the CD input and then I then had an input connected to it if I then selected the tuner input I could hear what was coming through from the CD. Not complete, you know, sort of breaking through, but there was a lot of cross talk across each one of the channels. Now, again, from experience, what that tells me is there is a very, very high possibility that there is a failure of the input selection IC. And I'll show this in the video, and it's taken from the schematic. And the input selection IC has a reference number of U3501. And it's a common device of this time period. So it's an LC78212. Now you can ask the question, you know, why why does these input ICs fail? You know, is it just design or, you know, what's sort of going on there? Well, it isn't. What commonly happens is that the user may well have the inputs connected, say, to the tuner input. And then while the amp's still powered, they'll remove maybe the right input and then go and plug it then maybe into the tuner. And as soon as you do that, you get this imbalance between the two inputs. And of course, it's connecting right direct to the IC. And that is the most common cause where you find that the IC fails, right? So if you're going to be moving the inputs from the rear while the amp's still powered, make sure you disconnect both of them for the respective input and then connect them. Don't connect one and then connect the other or just depower your amplifier and then make your necessary connections and then power up. So to get access to the IC, and I'll show you in the video, you've got to remove the DAC, right? So I just removed the screws from the rear, move the DAC out of the way. It's on two plastic pillars, so you just have to pull them, and then it will just pop off through the insert holes. And then I've got full access then just to make some tests. So what I'm doing is I just verify that it in, is indeed the issue with the IC. So the first thing I'll check is to make sure that the plus or minus... Uh, 15 volt supplies on the IC, all good, no issues. And then sometimes you can find this, if you just sort of use the flat of your finger, just touch the top, or maybe you have a thermal imaging device, you may find that the IC is running hot, indicating an internal short. This time it didn't. And then what I need to do then is to uh, take the amplifier apart, of course, then to get access to the, to the board. So a straightforward task of just desoldering the uh, failed IC and I show uh, the IC in its location and also the signal leads which would then go off to the volume control stroke um, tone control circuit board which also has the microprocessor as well and then replace the IC. Now once the chip was replaced all good everything then uh, worked correctly so no cross channel talk and also nice clear audio as well and I'm also showing in the video just a uh, picture really of the startup transform startup board and again this series of amplifier where you have a protection system built in you have the startup power supply which then will provide the power via the relay to the main toroidal transformer which has that steel encapsulation case 
of the top of it. So really a straightforward repair, not complicated. You know, when you sort of get these issues, you can use a scope if you wish to uh, understand where this noise problem is coming from. Or for myself, I just have an audio signal tracer. So it's just a simple matter then of just using the audio signal tracer just to check the uh, signals coming into the selection IC and then verify you know what is the output then from the IC then and then what I also did as well is I just checked the uh, bias on each one of the outputs and it was slightly high so this is normal you know just just as insight if you had an amp which has been running for a number of years you know it's going to be pretty rare that you measure the the output bias or the channel bias for the outputs and it's going to be set you know to the factory value you know that's not going to happen so just refer then to the service manual it's fully available online and then you can then reset it then back to the factory condition so normally to sort of do that you know just get your model meter you measure across the test points as indicated in the service manual and then you'll do an initial test uh, measurement and then you can then just adjust it and then leave it probably for about 15 20 minutes and uh, your volume control should be at minimum user controls at midpoint and then uh, no speakers connected and then it's just a, a final adjustment just to bring you back to the uh, to the final value and once that's done um, simple task then of just doing a operational or functional test uh, just to confirm that everything is a-okay all right so that sort of brings us to the uh, end of this repair tutorial so uh, i appreciate you listening and stopping by and if you have any questions by all means come back to me and uh, send an email through to audio amplifier servicing at aol.com i'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have or provide greater input so thanks again and until the next time cheers and take care of yourselves bye bye